pray. Heavenly Father, we plead your blood, Lord Jesus Christ, and we thank you, Father, that you love us. And Father, there's no question about your love for us because Jesus Christ is Lord. And we thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that you are here right now. You are here right now. And Holy Spirit, your presence flows for every believer in you. So Holy Spirit, I just thank you right now for your anointing. Father, as I plead your holy and precious blood, I thank you, Father, that you rebuke every demonic principality, Father. May I be so bold to ask, Father, and thank you that even your beloved children who are deceived right now in unforgiveness, in confusion, in hatred, whatever it is, Father God, in Jesus Christ's holy and precious name, I rebuke you, Satan, you must leave in Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. Amen. And Father God, we just thank you right now. Father, thank you for this word. Thank you for this word, Father, this, this fresh anointing from heaven. We bless you, O Lord. Thank you, Father. Speak to us. Speak to us. Speak to us, Father. And Holy Spirit, change us. Say it with me, beloved church, and change me, O Lord. Lord. Bless me, O Lord. Save me, O Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. And all God's beloved said, Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you guys. Praise God. The original title for this worship service was Men Make Coffee Between 1019 and 1039 AM. And guess what, beloved Charles? I was so tickled. I got the, I got the title. And just like that, I, I typed it all out. I even got a graphic right there of men making coffee. Right? And I was laughing, Pastor. I was laughing. And you know, you just have those moments. I'm just laughing with the Lord and everything else. And I said, well, okay, so that's the title, Father. So why did you give me that title? And then Father God says, because this is what we're going to be discussing on Sunday. Hebrews 10.19 to 10.39. And say with me, A.M. And this is the scripture that we're going to be going through. As you can tell, it's 20 verses. Um, and normally that's not a lot. But as you know how we worship here in God's holy house, Holy Spirit's the teacher. Amen. It doesn't matter who the mouthpiece is. It doesn't matter who's sharing the testimony or who's at the table. Right? It doesn't matter. It's all Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. It's all for his glory. Amen. Amen. So the true title of this message is... Don't throw it all away. Can you say that with me? Don't throw it all away. And the scriptures that we're going to be going into is John 10, 10, John 14, 6. If I may say, if I may be so bold to say, here in your church, Open Arms Community Church, and Holy Spirit's church, these are, these are a couple of our pillars and scriptures that we love. John 10, 10, of course, Lord Jesus Christ identified Brother Larry the devil and what he tries to do, right? Steal, kill, and destroy and of course, in John 14, 6, talks about he is the life, right? He is the way, right? He is the truth, life, way, truth, amen? I love that, right? I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yes. And we're going to do, we're going to go over these quickly, but we're going to get into Hebrews 10. Man, make coffee at 10, 19 to 10, 39 a.m. Amen. Are you all happy to be here? Yes. Praise God. Tell your face that. Amen. I'm just a friend of mine to tell your face that. Praise God. And some of you clap. Right? I wish my, my beloved Mason was here. We had a great time. For those of you who can come on Wednesday evening, listen. I just got to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. I'm going to stand before God and I'm going to be judged by God in the highest level. Yes. So if you get your feelings hurt or get offended, that's between you and God. Don't judge me. Don't get mad at me. Don't leave church. Amen. That's the devil. Can I get an amen? amen? The devil is all about creating division. The devil wants to destroy church. Amen? Yes. So please, don't get upset at me. But if you do, I can't control that. I'm just going to tell you the absolute truth. Amen? That if you've got nothing going on on a Wednesday evening, you should be in church. Amen. Can we give God praise for that? Can I get an amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's get right into this. Praise God. Say with me, don't throw it all away. Hallelujah. Thief comes except to kill, steal, and destroy. That's what the thief comes to do. Steal, kill, and destroy. Lord Jesus Christ said, I come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. 
14, 6 says, I am. The Lord Jesus Christ says, I am. Say that with me. I am. I am. I am the way, truth, and life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Can I get an amen? amen? Is there any other way? No. So let me ask you something. If you do not have Jesus Christ as Lord, can you get to the Father? No. If you don't have the sacrifice of God Almighty, who is God's sacrifice? Lord if you don't have him, do you have access to the Father? No. Amen. And I love this moment because God says, show this real quick. Say with me, Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Oh, there's no greater sound right now in your heart that fill all of heaven with praise. Amen. Some of you are like, oh, Brother Joey, it's just me. Rebuke that thought. Can I get that? Rebuke that thought. It's not just you. It's a God thing living in you. Father, Son, Holy Spirit in you. Amen. So when you say Jesus Christ is Lord, oh, hallelujah. Praise you. Amen. Praise you. Can somebody get excited? Yes. Amen. Because see, guess what? I choose to be excited. Amen. Amen. I ain't picking on nobody. You can even sit, you can sit there like this for all I care. Oh, what are you saying, amen? That's between you and God. But see, Joey Corrigan chooses 24 7 to be excited about what God did through Christ for me. Hallelujah! Oh, hallelujah! Hallelujah! And Joey, you guys, don't get crunchy. That's because my life gets gooder and gooder in Jesus' name. Right? Don't get crunchy because my life gets gooder and gooder because I choose to be thankful. Oh, I can't even move forward because God told me to share this with you. For 15 years, I struggled with addiction. 15 years. Ever, everything from just weed to the most horrible things, cocaine, laced with rat poison. Many times the devil tried to put me in the ground. And glory to God, now I know why. Hallelujah. Now I know why. He's the one to pray. But may I tell you, when I was addicted for 15 years, there was no question about how good the drugs was for Joey Corrigan. You know why? Because I told everybody how good the drugs was. I acted a fool. I was addicted. There was no question as far as how stupid drugs make you because look at Joey. Say with me, look at Joey. Right? I was out of my mind completely foolish. There was no inspecting the drug. You just look at Joey and go, yeah, that drug is powerful because look how stupid Joey is. I'm just being honest with you, right? But I chose to worship the drug. Am I preaching to somebody right now? I chose because of my I was raised this way. This happened to me when I was little. My daddy did this to me. Let me ask you something. I had to ask myself this when I come to know Jesus. When is enough enough? May I answer that for you? Look at the cross. Say it with me, enough. Glory to God, enough. There is no question as far as how much God loves you. And we're going to get into this right now. Amen. The three topics that we're going to be discussing, if you're taking notes, please take notes, praise God. Number one, a new and living way. Number two, the knowledge of the truth. And number three, richly rewarded life. Oh, hallelujah. How many of you love to be richly rewarded? Yeah. Amen. Let me say it gooder and gooder. How many of you want to be richly rewarded by God? Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. For those of you who didn't raise your hands, I reach out and I take your blessing. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, you didn't raise your hand. Last time I checked, when the teacher said, Who wants this? You got to ooh, right? Can I get an amen? Why do we act different when we're in God's house? Hallelujah. Y'all act like Lord Jesus isn't right here standing here. So, how many of you want God's gooder and gooder? We praise God in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's get into this. Hallelujah. Therefore, it's therefore a reason. Brothers and sisters, since we have 
confidence to enter the most holy place. Remember, we discussed last week the excruciating pain. And we discussed excruciating pain because that comes from the word crucifixion. Yes. But when we look and examine into the word crucifixion and we see what happened to our Lord Jesus Christ when he was spat on, when they beat him to a bloody pulp, when they ripped the beard out of his face, when they pushed the thorn, the, the crown of thorns on his head where it pierced through his skull. We see this excruciating pain, but then we go to when Lord Jesus cried out, Father, right? God, God, why did you forsake me? Eli, Eli, Lama Sabatani, right? That's excruciating pain. Being separated from God where you have no hope. There's some of you right now that's in that situation. God is saying, get right with me. Yes. Some of you may say, well, Brother Joe, you just don't know this person did me wrong. You heard what Brother, Brother Charles just said. <laughs> say it again. Did Lord Jesus Christ not do enough? You see, that's the trick of the enemy. That's the deception of the devil. For you to say, well, this person did this to me. Listen, God knows that. But it's time to say, this person did this to Christ. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Are you your own or are you a child of God? Ah. Amen. If you're a child of God, then guess what? All the wrong things that have been done, done to you, it belongs to Lord Jesus. Yeah. Can I get it? through the power of the Holy Spirit, 
sure all of eternity knows I tore this veil. Amen. And how did God tear that veil? Through his perfect blood. Amen. His perfect lamb. Our perfect Messiah. Yeah. Our perfect, yeah. there's only one perfect one, amen? Yeah. Say his name with me. Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, amen? Through the curtain that is his body. Glory to God, it's all just coming together. It's all just coming together. We went from before Lord Jesus Christ, where God was just behind this veil, and once a year, right? Here's my sacrifice. You couldn't even go in. Just feel the stillness right now in this, in this room. Can you imagine, Mama Kay? With the heart that you have right now in Jesus' name, right? Come on, Mom, Dad, right? That here you are in love with the Father. You have your sacrifice as perfect as can be. Took care of it. You loved it. And you know now you've got to die because you have to go because God said this is a requirement and I have to be all right with my Father. And you get to the point and they say, okay, Dad, that's a great job. We got it from here. And you can't even go. Is that just me? No. You can't even go in there. And God said enough of this. Amen. And you guys know we took me. You listen, if you're rooted here in Open Arms Community Church, you, you could just see the Father look at Lord Jesus and say, the time is now. Amen. I need you to go and save my people. Amen. And I want you to save my children that want something to do with me. Amen. Amen. Do you want something to do with the Lord today? Amen. Amen. Do you want something to do with the Lord? Oh, hallelujah. I want something to do with the Lord. Amen. Is that bring every moment in my life? I don't care what it is. Amen. And hallelujah, I'm so thankful. I'm surrounded by brothers and sisters. I reached out yesterday. I felt the pain of God, and I couldn't even move. Physically broken. Spiritually a mess. And I had to send out texts to pastors, to the elders, to to the leadership, I said, pray, help me pray. Because right now something's happening that has never happened. You guys know, been here three years now, by the way. It feels like a blink of an eye, right, Pastor? Have I ever sent you a message like that in three years, Pastor? No. And right now God wants to get into the Holy of Holies and allow his anointing to flow, amen? amen. Say with me, his body. His body. This is the new living way. Torn from the top to the bottom, beloved Kathy. The top to the bottom. Amen? And hallelujah, this is. So we're talking about new and living way, free from pain. What is that pain? Being separated from God. Amen. You never have to be separated from God. Amen. May I tell you, the only, the only distraction of the enemy to separate you from God is? If you're filled with nonsense and lies and corruption in here, this is how the enemy deceives you that God doesn't want anything to do with you. That's right. But if you could just capture these thoughts and know, devil cannot speak to me. You have no voice.
You know, I come across a lot of hopeful people. Unfortunately, though, they're like secret servant agents. They're, they're just, they're, they're just quiet. And so many times this past week, I'm like, let me hear your prayer, man. I don't speak in tongues. I'm not talking about that. If you have that gift, how do you speak in tongues? Well, why are you quiet? Let me hear you pray. Yeah. Let me hear you talk to the Father. Yeah. Let me hear you. Well, um, you mean say the Lord's Prayer? No, let me hear you talk to God Almighty. He's living in you. Talk to Him.
with pure water. This is Holy Spirit sanctification. Amen. Amen. Let us hold. Say we hold. Oh. Unswervingly. Amen. Amen. To the hope we profess. For he who promised is, is faithful. Amen. So who is our faith? And what does God's word say about our faith? He is faithful. Amen. Faithful. Amen. He is faithful. He will do it. Amen. He will do it. Praise God. Say it with me. He will do it. He will do it. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Amen. You know what I love about this word spur? Huh? I don't like riding horses. I ain't got nothing wrong. I got nothing against horses. I love looking at them in the countryside. Amen. I, I love I, I, the next brother William Twist. The next horse, the next horse you'll see your brother on is when we come back with Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And I'm Tr Tristan, I talk about this a lot. If God has a sister, it's probably gonna be that same horse that, <laughs> that took me in the wilderness and rubbed up against every tree. <laughs> I don't understand. I went, Sister Tish, I went on the horse with Jesus, I came back with Daisy Duke. Well, you know, everywhere there was all strong time. Praise God. I, at that point in my life, I have more Jesus. You know, right. you know, that's a test. When you go through all that, not say one bad word. Right? Somebody lay hands on Sister Bingham. Right? <laughs> This is what I love about this word, spur one another. The only way you spur somebody, you got to touch them. So let me ask you something. Can I spur you guys if I choose not to be here? No. Oh, come on, somebody. Not giving up. Meeting together. Yes. Say it with me. Not giving up. All right, when God says not giving up, Please help me. I'm, I, I, I'm a man, right? I mean, fallen man. Help me, because Holy Spirit's the one teaching us. Praise God. We're just worshiping Lord Jesus. Amen? But help me. When God says not giving up, does that mean that there's a choice? Yes. Does that mean there's a choice that either I can persevere and keep going or just say, I'm done? So may I preach that that way? And I, I'm running around asking Holy Spirit, may I deliver this message that way? Amen. 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 That if God says, all right, it's done, it's good, the door is open, here I am, come on, let's go, come on, let's, come on, let's go. And I'm like, all right. Is that giving up? Yeah. Right? When I'm like, okay, God. <sighs> See, right now, that's what Holy Spirit showed me, Brother Kevin, the attitude of Give it up. Or sometimes you have this. How many of y'all done that? Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> me too. God checked me too. He's like, why are you frustrated? Father God will say that. Why are you frustrated? I'm like, well, this is. So you're frustrated because of that. So is that how much your joy is warm? Immediately, come on, brother Joy, right? Immediately, Lord, forgive me. I can't believe I had that attitude. Holy Spirit, I bless you. Forgive me, Holy Spirit. I treasure you. I'm not going to let that upset me. Oh, Father God, forgive me, right? Forgive me. Hallelujah. Not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Amen. How many of you agree that the day is approaching that the church is going to set up? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. So here God is saying, encourage one another. Come to church. Meet together. Fellowship. And all the day more. Oh, God is saying even more as you see the day right now. Right now. Every moment of my life. I had a pastor friend of mine come over out of the blue, and I know Holy Spirit led him there last night to come to the house. See, many of you don't know this.
This school that fifty percent says to really feel crunch at the mid level. I'm not gonna let this trend, praise God. Right? We're not gonna let this trend. Here's 26 and 27. If we deliberately keep on sinning, here God is saying it's a sin not to come to church. And this isn't just regular sin now that we're talking. Listen, a couple weeks ago, Pastor Tish mentioned something that was heavy on her heart. Do you not think that as a pastor, I took that serious? And by the grace of God, that following Wednesday, Holy Spirit, hallelujah, gave every answer possible through Pastor John. It's on YouTube. It's, it, it's, it's, it's everywhere online. But now Holy Spirit wants to sum it up with this message today. And say it with me, hold on. Oh, Let's do it good and good or hold on. Oh, Unswerving. Unswerving. That means, guess what? You ever hold on to something, but then you don't have a solid foundation, and that thing you're holding on to just... Is it just me? No. Can I get an amen? amen? Right? You hold on to something, but yet you don't have foot, right? You don't have feet planted, and it just jerks you around, right? God is saying, you ready? Yeah. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Is your feet planted in the gospel of peace. Yes. Who is agape? Well, I am planted in the Father because I have received his perfect son, the Messiah, my Lord Jesus Christ. And because Lord Jesus Christ owns me for all of eternity and he breathed through me, Holy Spirit, his spirit lives in me. I am planted. Now I can hold on
Are you going to church? You know what I hear a lot? Yeah, I hear that a lot. Brother PJ said, oh, I have a relationship with God. Well, if you did, you'd be coming to church. Oh, you know what? See, this is the beauty of it. Some of you right now, some of you are mad at me. I don't care. I don't care because we're in the Word of God and it's just going to get gooder and gooder. And then, now the beauty is, if you want to worship God and you want this breakthrough in your life and you want the Holy Spirit's anointing and you want all of heaven, right here, right now. Hallelujah. And guess what? It's going to get gooder and gooder. But if you want to keep shrinking back, if you want to keep running away, if you want to use lame excuses that, well, I've got a relationship with God, or I read my Bible every day, and I, listen, I'm going to say something right now, Holy Spirit, release me to say it, and it's going to shake this entire world. I'm not the church. Amen. You know how many times I heard that this week and I rebuked them? I'm the church. No, you're not. No. I'm a member Amen. of the body of Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, he is the church. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, he is the church. It's his body. Amen. And then we are all members of his body. Amen. And last time I checked, Lord Jesus Christ is coming back for Judgment. Are you guys hearing me now? 
God is talking to Christians that say that they're Christian but don't want to come to church or just want to come to church on their own terms. Oh, I told you, this is a hard message. God is going to break some people. I pray you, I pray you don't leave open on to me, church. But I'm telling you right now, wake up. Say it with me, wake up! Wake up! Facebook, say it with me, wake up! Wake up! There's some on Facebook right now that guess what? They could have come to church. But no matter what, they're, they're, they're just staying home. Listen, I don't care if it's just that one view. It's just that one, I pray. That in Jesus' name, that one said, Lord, I want to be right with you. Amen. Amen.
Why is it that when we receive Lord Jesus Christ, we think that because of what he did on the cross, we got nothing to answer for? Are you kidding me? But yet when you have a preacher, a brother who loves you, a godly uncle flowing through me, I live my life, you can examine my life. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, I glorify my Lord, and all you can see is Holy Spirit. But yet when I'm bold to tell you the truth, now you judge me and you get mad at me? Oh, foolish people! That's what the Bible says. You foolish people. Can you not see the word of God alive through your beloved brothers and sisters? And how the anointing Holy Spirit right now is speaking fire in you. That as a man of God, as a woman of God, as a beloved child of God, we have to, we have to come together in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. We have to come together. Deliberate sin is not coming together. There is no more sacrifice. So we discussed this earlier. How would you get to God if there's no Lord Jesus Christ? Can you? No. So you say you know Lord Jesus Christ. You say that you're saved. Right, Pastor Tish? You say that you're saved, but yet you have no desire to come to church. Something's wrong there. And you see, right there, Holy Spirit's exposing the flaw of the old covenant. You see, in that line earlier in the message, Holy Spirit showed you Mom Deb's heart. <laughs> Why? Because by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, God blessed me with a mom. I'm not telling you right now. Over two years ago, right? God told us right there. And she received me as a son. She did. She said, I receive you as a son in Jesus' name. And I said, I receive you as a mom. See, this goes beyond what we can comprehend. But see, I love her because we talk all the time, and this is her relationship with God. It's like the Apostle Paul. I said that to her not too long ago. And you can just see her with her sacrifice and just so, so happy. But yet so sad. But this is what God wanted you to see. You also have somebody, and I'm just going to play the part, that has a sacrifice but wants nothing to do with God. And as the line goes, no heart for God. I don't care. But I got my best of the best. And you see this, brother there? When it's my turn, here's my sacrifice. They inspect it. It's all good. I'm done. See you next year. That's true. That's true. We have Christmas coming. You know how packed the churches get during Christmas time? That one time out of the year. Maybe some come, through, come, come during Easter. I'm not judging nobody. I'm just calling out the fruit. There you go. Wow. Are you in the old covenant? No. Right? Pastor straight up said no, and he's speaking for our church body. Amen. No, where are you coming to church? But let me ask you, beloved church family, the heart of this man that I just played for you all. I wanted nothing to do with God. I'm just going through the motions because you know what? I want to be good. But I don't care about that. We have Christians right now saying that they belong to Lord Jesus Christ who live life this way. And it is not right. And God says, you have judgment coming on you. I may be speaking to some of you right now. That you were teetering the boat. I may be, and guess what? I don't care. I'm just thankful you're here. But God right now says, listen, the devil is trying. But now it's time to get right with the Lord. Amen? Amen. Let's move on. Praise God. See, if you got to ask for saved, you ain't saved anyway. What's that? I said, if you're thinking, if you're thinking that you ain't saved, or, or you're saved, you act like that, you're not saved anyway. Come on now, let's just give God praise. Amen. 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 Hey, I appreciate the thank you. <laughs> praise God. Hallelujah. Anyone who rejected the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Here we go. 
Are you all ready? How much more severely do you think someone deserves to be punished who has trampled, who has treated as an unholy thing the blood of the covenant that sanctified them and who have insulted the spirit of grace, Holy Spirit? May I repeat that again? How much more severely do you think someone deserves to be punished who has trampled? Can you read that with me? Yes. The Son of God underfoot. I asked Holy Spirit, why didn't you let me read it? That first time he said he wanted all of us to repeat it. Do you guys know what trampling is?
Sometimes you were publicly exposed to insult and persecution, and other times you stood side by side with those who were so treated. You suffered along with those in prison and joyfully accepted the confiscation ooh, that's a big word, of your property because you knew that you yourselves had better and lasting possession. Amen? Amen. This introduces to number three, richly rewarded life. Say this with me, more abundantly. More abundantly. Say it good, more abundantly. More abundantly. Hallelujah. Don't throw it all away. We're getting to it right now. Say with me, don't throw it all away. Don't throw it all away. So you receive salvation and you say you have salvation. I receive you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I am saved. It's not for a pastor, a preacher, a priest. It's not for anybody to judge you. The judge will judge you. Can I get an amen? amen? So you say that you receive the gift of God. And like Brother Mike said, Holy Spirit said it through Brother Mike. Thank you, Lord. The Brother Mike also just said it. So you say that you received it, but yet the fruit of your life is, I don't want anything to do with church. I don't want anything to do with fellowship. Just threw it away. God forbid, amen? amen. Just threw it away. I hear we're going to get into this. Verse 35. So do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. Hallelujah. What confidence is this? Well, let's go into the Word of God. Let's do it. Let's do a direct comparison in how we started in Hebrews 19, 10, 10, 19. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place, by the same with me, blood of Jesus. This is my confidence that my Lord Jesus Christ, he is the Messiah, the perfect sacrifice of God. My sacrifice. And I know that my sacrifice is alive in me. And I know that God lives in me and through me, which means that the veil is torn from where? The top to the bottom. And now it's complete open 24-7, Sister Kathy, to have this relationship with God, to just worship him nonstop, 24-7, as many times a day. Amen? Oh, Rich 
richly rewarded life more abundantly. You have the scriptures that just overlay the way, the truth, and the life. Amen? The way, the truth, and the life. And here God is saying, verse 36, you need to persevere. So remember what I said earlier, right? Persevering is no matter what.
But yeah, you want nothing to do with church. You don't belong to church. You say you are the church. No, you're not. You know how hard it is? You know how bold you got to be to tell somebody? Especially when they think that they know you because they see you on Facebook or they see you in the community. And they're like, oh, man, yeah, well, I know you, but I, I am the church. No, you're not. You know how bold you have to be to pee in someone's Cheerios? I'm just being honest with y'all because they're deceived. You're a member of the body of Christ. I'm a member yeah. of the body of Christ. But we come together and we form the body. Amen. 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 And Lord Jesus Christ is coming back for his body. Amen. Amen. Listen to this, verse 38. My righteous one will live by faith and I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. Show of hands, how many of you know somebody that shrunk back? Can you guys look around? Please, exercise your neck. Look around, family. So let me ask you something. Here in God's church body, in Open Arms Community Church, should we not be experiencing from this point on just absolute revival? Amen. 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 I'm talking about saying we need revival. Amen. I'm talking about Holy Spirit revival. Amen. Amen. Listen, if God has charged every one of you to have this difficult conversation. Listen, don't be lukewarm with God. He'll spew you out. And God don't. Because right now God is orchestrating conversations for you to have with family and friends. God is orchestrating you to say, don't play games with God. Don't trample over Lord Jesus Christ. Can, can you imagine can you imagine if I took the cross from the prayer room and put it right here? Can you imagine somebody just coming up and spitting on it? That's what Holy Spirit just gave me the image of right now in someone who doesn't want to come to church. That's what they're actually doing, but yet they're so deceived in pride, whatever it is, that they're saying that they're a Christian, but they're really an enemy. Remember, I told you from the get-go, I have family and friends right now that are deceived by the devil, and I'm not trying to attack you or your loved ones. I'm trying to encourage you that we need to get right with God. Amen? Amen. But if you're going to get upset at me because I'm speaking the truth, now you got something to deal with with the Lord. Amen. Because God right now is saying, will you reach out to them and tell them what they're doing? Because when that trumpet goes off, there are going to be the ones going, all these souls are going, but why am I not lifting off the ground? Here's a quick question the pastor of Open Arms Community Church has for you. Are you a member of a church? Are you a member? Yeah. Isn't it amazing how deep this gets? It's no longer just a member. Oh yeah, I'm a member there. No, but are you a member? Are you fellowshipping? Are you coming to church? You notice right now, Holy Spirit doesn't even want to close this service because right now there's a lot, a lot of us that God is working on right now. When we make it right with God, here we're going to close in this last verse. But, that's a big fiery but right there. Look, there's a big but and there's fire. That's a big fiery but. But, we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed. Can you amen? amen? We do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed. Let me make this clear. Destruction doesn't always look like destruction. Destruction can look like being just blessed with all kinds of hobbies. Yep. Yep. But guess what? It's destruction. It's not a blessing. It's a curse. Yep. You know how many people out here say that? Oh, I'm so blessed. I get to do this every Sunday. And I'll tell you right now, I tell them all the time, are you going to church? Well, no, when I go do this specific thing, sometimes it's hunting, sometimes it's fishing, whatever it is, I spend time with the Lord. That's not what I ask you. You see, family, I'm not trying to be a friend to nobody. I'm your brother. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? Say it with me. I'm not your friend. I'm not your friend. I'm your brother. 
And what makes me your brother, Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. If you try to be a friend of this brother, you're really with God. But we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith. Let's say it with me. Our and our saved. Can you all stand up with me? So the question remains. I hear this all the time, especially after the Holy Spirit says it through Pastor Tish. Pastor, so do you believe once saved, always saved? And right away I say, yes, I do. Amen, Pastor? Amen. Well, how can you believe that? Because I know that when Lord Jesus Christ saves a soul, they're saved. Amen. 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 And then the next question I have, get ready for this. The next question I have for this soul is, what are you doing wrong? What is going on in your life that you ask me this question? And a lot of times, it's either addiction, a lot of times, it's, it's, it's just dabbling into things that they shouldn't even be doing. I've noticed an increase. There are some that ask you for other souls that are no longer here that went on. This whole once saved, always saved. And I tell them, rather than being distracted about this person's salvation, you have to be worried about yourself. Because the devil is using this person who passed on as a distraction in your life, and all you're doing now is you're getting crunchy about it, and you're trying to you're trying to change God and who He is, and trying to make Him where He's okay with living a life of sin or being perverse. And all. that's not God. That's the devil. Amen. So I speak this over everybody who have ears right now. Listen, I have loved ones that went on. And the enemy wants nothing more than for me to just wrestle with those thoughts. Guess what? They're gone. Amen. And I'm talking about the ones that I didn't know or I wasn't there. But all I can do is bless the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen? I'm asking you right now, for those of you who say that you're saved, there has to be fruit in your life. Yes. See, I'm so thankful because here at Open Arms Community Church, we strive, we strive. To bless God Almighty and bless Him in a way that we know that all we want is His presence flowing in our life. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask you once again: Will you, will you reach out to the ones that you laid out to the altar and let them know this word? I'm going to ask you. Listen, I'm going to ask you for those of you who are blessed to do social media. I'm going to ask you to share this message. I don't ask this all the time, but I'm going to ask you: Will you share this message yeah. to your loved ones? Will you share this to your family and friends? Amen? Amen. Because right now, the devil has so many deceived thinking, I'm the church. No, you're not. No, you're not. Number three, the devil do not care about the body of Christ. Satan wants to destroy church. He wants to destroy church. Amen? So if you guys saw the overlay of way, truth, and life, this is what the devil wants to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to steal the way, the new and living way that we have through Christ. He wants you to believe that you can do it a whole different way. How in the world can we receive Lord Jesus Christ and now try to worship God in a whole other way when Lord Jesus Christ said, I made you the way? Amen. Family, I need you to push through in these next few moments because the devil right now is trying to distract me. Yeah. I can feel it in the atmosphere. Leadership, pray. Don't be a part of the distraction. Pray. Don't be a part of wandering. Don't be a part of, oh, well, the lights are down and I'm tired. Fight! Amen. Say, will you fight? Amen. Listen, how can we make another way when Lord Jesus Christ said, I tore this veil, and now you have to come in? And now you notice what God did. Many of you walked through this front door. I know there's a few that walked through the side door. But as you walk through the front door of this building, there's the veil. And that veil is torn in half. You see what that identifies right there is that this is God's holy house. 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And because you receive the sacrifice of God, you yourself are saying, God, I treat you with reverence. I worship you, Lord Jesus Christ. I don't treat you like garbage. I protect you. I'm coming. And as you bring yourself into the fellowship, you notice how his anointing right now is just flowing mightily. Amen? Amen. I'm going to ask the leadership team to come up. Praise God. I asked the leadership team to come up because there's some of you that may need prayer. I'm going to ask you to pray for our leadership team. Deacons, elders, they're all going through distractions. These next couple songs, it's a 